Here we are, Toys Pond Tour, episode five. I thought it there already, Gav. I know, leaving this beautiful hotel behind. Where are we going what. today? We are going to the Netherlands. It's a long, long drive to this morning. Five hours, something like that. Toy Shop on Tour, series two. The return of that TV series that takes you, dear viewer, all around the world, as me and Gav buy as many toys as we can and pop them in this van. And this time, we're visiting a whole bunch of shops all around Europe. Action figures. Dolls. Star Wars. Weird stuff. Transformers. Monsters. Space toys. Bootlegs. He-Man. Travelling thousands of miles through Italy, Switzerland, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium and France. We'll have some rare items and some old favourites. So join me, Joe, Gav and Matt the Cameraman as we take this Toy Shop on Tour. Bikes, lots and lots, lots of bikes. Lots of bikes. It just looks really tranquil. It's really nice, isn't it? Nice, everything's quite uniform. So Joe's going to pay for the parking. I can't wait to get in. It looks really cool in there. Come on. Shall we sneak in and have a look? Come on. <laughs> wow. It's a busy shop. We've got a lot of people in here, but there's a load of amazing stuff. There's a wall of vac form Vaders. Oh, we've got lots of, got some vintage dolls up there. Got the great Garlo. The stuff, it's floor to ceiling. It's exactly what you want out of a toy shop. We've got all the modern action figures here. Oh, see, I really want this full set because it makes the horse to sit Batman on from Dark Knight Returns, one of the greatest comic books ever made. Look at that, oh, that's a weird one. It's like a Micro Man Superman. That's cool, that is. It's like vintage meets modern. Interesting. So, Jeff. Yes? Thanks for that, you sorted me parking out. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing to be here at last. It feels like we've been driving for hours and hours. Well, we have, quite frankly, but it's, it's so good to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Let's... I know you from YouTube, oh, thank... <laughs> Instagram. Very kind of you. <laughs> yeah, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> it's really busy in here. There's people everywhere. Yeah. The whole street's rammed full of people. It's great. It's like a different vibe down here, isn't it? It's a good vibe. Yeah. But I'm surprised because of the heat. The heat. It's the whole week. It's so cr busy. I'm happy because it's good yeah, for yeah. business, but I think most of the people will go to the beach and <laughs> they stay in it's, it's yeah. Amsterdam. Can you jump in the canal, Jay? I'll jump in the canal. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? I like to swim. So unlike anything else we've seen so far on the tour, in like the cool factor, what a great position. Because the, the market for me, you know, it's, it changes. Yeah. You know, I have this store for 32 years and I was one of the first in this country who, who started. I'm now 52, but I started when I was 17, when I was graduating from, yeah. from one school. And my parents took me to, a, my parents were antique toy dealers in tin toys, you know. From wow. a, yeah, they were one of the main dealers in Europe and uh, for years. And they took me when I was 17, so that is 1978, they took me to uh, Sandown, to the East oh, Sandown Park. Yeah, 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 they took me to the toy show and I was 17 and I thought, and I saw then people dealing in Star Wars. That's when I started with Star Wars. And then I finished school and I, had, I, I collected tin robots, vintage robots, and I started my shop with, uh, with my collection. It's so difficult to find over here the vintage yeah. items. Uh, it's hard to keep it stocked, isn't it? Yes. You, unless you're on yeah. it all the time. Yeah. You know, with the young people, the younger people, they like anime. So I do a lot it's with the anime yeah. stuff and the yeah. Gundam and because that's the market at the moment over here. And well, we can see how busy it is yeah. all the time. There's but, people yeah, going but, in and out of camera the shots. There's a really cool looking Lily Munster in here. Looks like a uh, kind of a rubber squeezy toy in its original baggy. We need to have a look at it. It's clearly Lily Munster, but it's on a Bugs Bunny card, which makes no sense. Layla, Leia. 
Hmm, interesting. So The Monsters was a TV show from way back, black and white TV show. They're making a new movie really soon, so it should come, you know, come back to the forefront. And you don't find a lot of Monsters merchandise. So she is amazing. Take a look at her. I'll be wanting to get her straight out of this baggie though. That's the thing, she's going on my shelf. She's 10 euros. You can't fault that, she's coming home. Okay, we've got a whole cabinet of DC characters here. Some great looking stuff. Some this is from Batman Black and White. What they did, it must have been sort of, see the 90s, early 2000s, they did a range of new Batman comics by various artists and they did them all in black and white. And it was so popular that they've released statues of them and in the style of each individual artist. And you'll see each one is very different to the other. And they are really, really cool. Such a good concept. With retro being massively popular now, it's extended to new toys released for kids. And this one, this one range is really good. World's smallest. And what they do, they do tiny, perfect versions of all the toys you once looked. This is G.I. Joe. They do this, they do He-Man, they do Duncan Yo-Yos, little light brights, they do everything. And you know, it's just a little thing. You can hang it up, you can put it on your shelf and you don't have to have the original stuff. It's just a little reminder of what you used to like. As tiny as it is, they've even done the flocked hair like the original ones. Amazing. There we go. There we go. Now these little Star Wars coin purses. This one, Admiral Akbar. Everyone loves Admiral Akbar. It's trap. And all they were, rubbery, cheap coin purses. Actually, very collectible now. There's a whole range of them, all the characters. And they're tiny, so it's an easy collection to store. You put them all in a box, or just all on your shelf, little stand them up. Just really cool yeah. little item. What you found, Gav? Loads of crazy little bits. What about you, anything? Cool, loads of cool stuff. I found bits up here. There's so much cool stuff. Look at the cool Japanese stuff here. That's awesome. Otasuki man. But you go down here and I'm going, no, 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 no. Right on the bottom, look. Little old plastic Batman bat boat. I love that, it's really cool. And it's the same story over here. Over here. All the good stuff in here. I think he just hides it. Jeff, why are you hiding things? I want to see that. I want to get in there. Ta -da -ta. <laughs> cool things in here. I also want to ask about that bat boat down there. Yeah. Is, it, is it broken, that one? If it's broken, no. Is it, no. They normally a, it's, a, a, it's still floating. <laughs> I don't know. You tried it in the canal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. And something we don't see very often at all is this older... No, because it's from German. Yeah, yeah. older era. Okay. I don't want to slip that into place, but that's the cool. The best part I like is the box. You that's know, amazing. The, the art, the box art. Yeah, that's great. It's so where's Robin? Robin left us. Yeah, Robin uh, lost the battle. I How asked, much could it be, Jeff? That I, asked, I asked three. I have three fifty. Three fifty on it. But uh, I only want to play with it in the bath. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or maybe the canal later. But you know, some items. It doesn't matter to me if they stay on the shelf for years because oh, yeah. people. We love know, them, don't we? The reason people, why we do yeah, this because we love yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, and I love you know it's, but I like the. And it's nice because they don't make a lot of German. Uh, really and this, cool. this, you know, J O. Do you know the J O. Bra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they. It's the. It's the start of Playmobil. This is far cooler than. I mean, Playmobil space. I quite like. Yeah. But this is really cool. I I like that a lot. But I don't know. I want to play with it in the bath. No. I want to play that one in the back. That's just so cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, 9067. Okay, we'll have a think about that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. But it's a lot of toy. Yeah. And find another. They don't come on. All over Europe, we've seen loads and loads of Japanese space toys. I thought this might dissipate by the time we got to the more northerly countries like the Netherlands, but no, there's loads here. Got some Shinsei Commander Shovel. We've got some more down there, Jeep Tunnelin. Some of these were based on Jerry Anderson toys as well, I believe, from the show. When we started dealing, 
he was really cheap, wasn't he? And now he's a bit more expensive. This one, it's, it's very popular. I can never remember how to pronounce his name. But what I like about me, and I don't know what the show was or anything like that, but you got the little dog. And that's what I always check for whenever I open one up. It's like, has it still got the dog? Jeff, how much is that? Uh, don't get a heart attack, but okay. I, asked, I asked 300. 300 for that. Yeah. Okay, it's definitely above my pay grade, but it's not. Good to know, I've got a good eye. Yeah. If only either of us could remember what he was called. You pathetic pair of pitiful pinheads! It's clearly Greg from the 1970s anime Captain Future. Dolts, half wits, bunglers! Again, more cool, crazy Japanese toys. These are fantastic. I love them. These are bonkers, aren't they? What a crazy toy that is. But I love it. It's great. This is expensive as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a uh, 250. There you go. Told yeah. you. Again, I've got a good eye. Okay, here we have it. An absolute toy classic, the Great Garlu. Made by Mark's Toys, about 1961, I think it was. He is amazing. Look at him. He's basically a robot creature. This guy still works. Look at him go. I'm back. And then, look at that. It's like a robot exercise. You know, he's from 1961. He's an old man. But look, he's got everything. He's got his little medal there. And all the new toy designers all love the Great Garlu. There's so many, like, Super 7 have just released a Great Garlu figure. Uh, the little uh, Nema Studios from the UK, they've released a Great Garlu inspired figure. So he's still there in the public conscious, in the toy collector conscious. So I suppose the question is, Jeff. Yes. How much is the Great Garlu? Ask 500. 500 euros. Yeah. He doesn't work. His arms don't work, do they? No, his arms don't work. But... I like him very much. It's not often you have the opportunity to buy one, is it, Jeff? It isn't. You no. Don't, you don't ever see them. Tell us about these heads. You know these Darth Vader heads you've got there? Yeah, the heads. How, how you've had, They're old, aren't they? Yeah, I had them. Um... I bought them, I think, in the late 80s, early 90s, at a sci-fi show Amazing. from uh, Jason Joyner in, in the UK. And uh, there I bought them. Uh, wow. I don't know if they were made for, uh, if for a store display. And I, when I moved here uh, in this location in 1996, I, my father said, you should put them there. So, and that's the, where they're hanging now. That, for, dads are often right, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jeff's kindly allowed me in this cabinet. Yeah. I'm a, there's a few things I like in here, but straight away I was drawn to these. Yeah. Now these came with a very rare, very hard to get playset, the Space 1999 Eagle One from Mattel back in the day. A very, very sort of revered toy, isn't it? The actual yeah, toy itself. Yeah, yeah. So to find the figures on their own is really, Unusual. Are they for sale? Yeah. How much are they for I the asked, set? Uh, I asked twenty. I asked thirty euro each. What could you do for those five, Jeff? Uh, one twenty. One twenty. Well, that's the price you've got on them. It's 30, <laughs> 30 euros each. Yeah. Could so you do any less? One ten. One ten. Yeah. That's. I'm a buyer at a hundred. You're a buyer at a hundred. Uh, and only one's got the accessory. Yeah, I oh know. You have to uh, have a look at it too. It's okay. Can we do 100? Yeah, we oh, excellent. Yeah, Thanks, Jeff. That's amazing. <laughs> and something I never expected to find here in the Netherlands. You're welcome. Now, just up here in the Godzilla cabinet, I've discovered yet another little Mothra lava. Now, I think I bought one of these on the UK tour, not this particular one, but it's a collection of mine that I have to do. They don't come up very often. So this little guy is the Mothra Lava. So this little poo <laughs> becomes one of Godzilla's greatest adversaries, the giant Mothra, giant moth kaiju. Absolute phenomenal. But me, I just like the little poo. Oh, wow, look up here. Now I'm a sucker for a trade box. Oh, that's a trade box for Return of the Jedi books. That's really cool. Contents. 
return to the Random House Distribution Centre, Westminster, Maryland, and here we have the books that will be in it. So you could spend your, I mean, if you're a kid in the 80s, everybody had pop-up books, didn't they? So here we go. Amazing. The fun, you, you would look at these for hours and hours on end. Kids now, I think, would think you're mental. It's not an iPad, you'd be trying to swipe left or something or whatever it is. But, oh, look at that. That's so cool. Recreate the scene from the film. There's something very charming about that. Jeff, is that box for sale? Yeah, but I don't know what to ask for it. Well, it's only the book box. It's only nearly, a book box. And I've just yeah, nearly dropped it. Yeah. But somebody in the US asked me also already about it. Have they? And I, I said uh, I don't know the price yet. But uh, I mean, really, I like the idea of putting stuff in it to take home because, like, it's just nice to have a bit of vintage. That's cool. Right. Uh, Twenty-five. Twenty-five euros. Yeah. It's original '80s. You do 20 euros, Jeff? I do. We have 20 deal. euros? I bought a brown cardboard box. <laughs> and if you think I'm mental, you're probably on the right track. <laughs> oh, it's a busy street, isn't it? This is, the, I think this is the busiest vintage toy shop or toy <laughs> shop I've ever been in. It's absolutely bonkers. <laughs> it's non-stop, isn't it? Yeah. It is, you know, it's, all the time. It's been great. It's a good mix. You, you can find a little bit vintage, a little bit, little bit Japanese, you can find Lots of treasure. In Lots Jack's of shop. hidden treasures. So, yeah. Because I still have in <laughs> some hidden treasures. Oh, that's for your next trip. Now he tells oh. us oh. hidden oh. treasures for the next trip. So that's trip. a trigger to come back. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes. So, thanks, guys. Yes. See you soon. Yes. Bye. Bye. So, it's been another good day on Toy Shop on Tour. It has a long day. A very long day. <laughs> Tomorrow, the Toy Boys. The Toy Boys. And then yes. where else? Belgium. Oh, amazing. Amazing, eh? Awesome. Come on, let's get something. Let's go. The Toy the Boys. Toy Boys. I've been looking forward to this one. I am really looking forward to this. Look at the window. Oh, I think we're going to have some fun here. There's a little television playing vintage SNES Mario Kart on. Now that That's is amazing. very cool, that is. Looks like it's going to be great. Where are the guys? Where are they hiding? Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> hello. Morning, Peter. How is the trip been? Uh, morning, it's Michelle. Been really good so far. Morning. Oh, we've yeah, got a... really good so far. Did we've... you find anything interesting already? Yes, we found some amazing stuff. And we've come to another amazing shop, so we're very happy. Yeah. You're very, very welcome. Well, we're going to get stuck straight in and start looking round. One of those shops that puts all their figures in nice bags. And it's got the presentation, look at that Batman. It's cool. And the header card, the header card makes yeah. it. Yeah, that's really Just nice. Just that little professional touch. Yeah. We could learn a thing or two here. Yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's some really cool ones as well. Impedimentia, I think the name is in English. Oh, it's really cool. They're, I think they're vital statistics uh, ch shield bearers, they are. Oh no, that's one of his shield bearers there. Look, you see where he carries the shield. These are, these are things you just don't see in the UK, not on this sort of level, just hanging on the shelves. There's more on here. That's impediment to you. Look at this lot. No accessories though. I need to find ones with accessories. Oh, there's one at the back with accessories. Oh, that's cool. Lots and lots of modern figures. Some of the tiny to Necker's Toony Terrors. These are quite good. Hit and miss, I think, design-wise, but some of them, again, it's spot on. Like the Creeper from Creepshow. He's cool, isn't he? And Ash. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at Ash. But yeah, lots of good modern stuff here. I do love Black Star things. They've become a feature of Toy Shop Tour somehow, haven't they? Oh, look, not Black Star. Brave Star down here. And we've got Thunderstick in the back there. I wonder how much he is. He looks nice. Thunderstick's one of the harder figures to get in the range. It used to be when the others were worth nothing. Thunderstick was always still expensive. Now the others have come up. 
and Thunderstick's still around about the same sort of value. So he almost he's almost nearly good value sort of in your head because he hasn't gone up too much. Rambo, the questionable series for children. You can buy lots and lots of guns to kill people with. But yeah, very cool though. How much is that? It's a bit faded. Peter, yeah. shall, how much is uh, that one? How much is that one? Yeah. It's uh, the Rambo. It's, um, we had a few. Uh, this is the last one. I love it because it's just a gun. And the design is excellent because the picture is so cool. Um, 15. Okay, I'll put that on my maybe pile. This sort of stuff does come up. Rambo, Coleco Rambo stuff. Box, sealed, minty. The, all the little accessory packs, because they did so many, they do seem to come up. I've got quite a few, but not this one. I haven't got this one at the moment. So I think that's definitely going to have to go in my pile, actually. I've, got, I've upgraded it now in my head. If you noticed during those few seconds, I went from, I'll have a think to go and I'll put it in my pile and we'll see what we can do. What's well, first thing in the pile? There we go. Selection of Master of the Universe figures. And obviously, looking at Scare Glow here. You know, different halberds as opposed to it being in Europe or America. So you could get a green halberd. And this one's got the one that glows up in the dark. What I love about glow in the dark figures generally is that when I turn the lights off in the shop at night and I go home, it's just you met by all these little toof, toof in each cabinet. Because it was all the rage, wasn't it, in the 80s. Glow in the dark stuff was kind of was in. And especially now at the moment, it's so sunny. And it soaks up all the sun's rays and then emits them when you go home at night. So it's really cool. My favourite figure though right next to him. Mosquito is, I think, my favourite He-Man figure. He's got one as well. Oh, Peter and Michelle have got one with the, the gun, which is always missing. It's quite a breaky gun. These break really easily as well on the handle. So it's nice to see one with that, but I'm just going to show you how he works. Because the thing is with these, it's the way the blood pumps. This one isn't working now. There he is. There he goes. There he goes. Ugh. Ugh. It's amazing. Such a cool feature on a figure. See the blood pumping in his chest, it was amazing. He's great. And obviously based on a mosquito, which I absolutely hate after this journey. So I'm covered in bites. All my legs are absolutely bitten to death. They swelled up like balloons. And here's my favorite He-Man figure just mocking me. I'm back on retro gaming and I've spotted an absolute childhood favorite. Me and my friend Rich used to go to the, there were still second-hand gaming shops, even back then in the early 90s. And we picked this game up for cheap, thinking, what is this? We had absolutely no clue, but it looked cool. Hanky O Alien. And it was one of the greatest games I had ever played. I can only describe it as a cross between Pac-Man and Dig Dug. And it also had the basic version. I don't know if you can see there. And it was basically stick men running around a little maze like they'd up upgraded it for Game Boy but it also included the original old version <laughs> what a fantastic game and what an amazing blast from the past and I can't believe we're looking at 75 euros that would have been probably two pounds back when we bought it really nice to see looking at the GI Joes you're not a line that I normally look at but European exclusives and that's what we see as we go around Europe, is finding this European stuff. What you really want to find is when they don't know that it's a European exclusive and the price doesn't reflect it. This one definitely does. We've also got another one here. These are great. One of the Tiger Force guys. Just such a cool, cool figure and one you don't often see. I've not actually got this one in the shop at the moment. But, um, but yeah, Peter and Michelle know their prices, so we'll put him back. But more close to home for us, sort of taste of home is Red Jackal from the Action Force line. Merely a repainted Destro with the old uh, Red Shadow emblem painted on him. Such a cool figure. I love these. What about, what is it about this trip with one-armed big robots? Man, they're turning up everywhere. It's quite cool, but I think I've done my one-armed robot. I've got my one-armed robot fix for this uh, this trip. That is the other arm, though. It is the other arm, but it's not the right <laughs> robot anyway. So. Rock Lords by Bandai. Went alongside with the GoBots. This here is one of the Jewel Lords. 
and there was three jewel lords and the later in the line and much more difficult to get this is solitaire she's the only female rock lord and isn't she nice and this one is a beauty she's not gone yellow this plastic famously goes very very yellow she is a beaut but she's at 60 euros which is about right that's about what we charge from the uh, filmation ghostbusters line we were looking at the card back just the other day and she was on it and now we've got one got one in the flesh she's great you know vampire style she's got a real creepy filmation face they all look very similar to he-man filmation was you know they did he-man and things like that and they all had a similar look to them great animation style she's cool very simple figure she doesn't do a lot but she's nice Matt, look here. I think this is, and I'm, if I'm not much mistaken, a complete what they called a farmer's set. Asterix. So these were not characters that you saw if you read the books, you'd see them in the background. They wouldn't be main characters, but they still went and produced the figures. And look, it's even got the three ducks. And it's only 20 euro. That's coming home with me. Unless it's just him that's 20 euros. It might just be him that's 20 euros. If the set's 20 euros, then I'm getting it. If it's just him that's 20 euros, then this is a lot of money and I'm not getting it. It says 20 euros or 19.99 on there. Is that for everything? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a whole set, yeah. Yeah, cool, that's all right. Just check in, had a moment where I wasn't sure, so I thought bag I'd check. Put it in a bag. Oh yeah. Okay, the Twilight Zone from the late 50s was kind of a creepy sci-fi show, which, you know, it's kind of like uh, the shows today where they point out what the future's going to be like and how horrible it's going to be. And they had a sci-fi edge to it. And this particular one, Talky Tina, it's a modern example by Trick or Treat Studios who make all the best modern replicas, horror replicas. She was probably one of the very first examples of the creepy doll in TV and film. And look at her, all in black and white, because the show is black and white, obviously, late 50s. She's fantastic. And just creepy like that. You should watch the show. One of the coolest play sets ever made is the Karate Kid House or Attack Alley. It's a house, isn't it? But no, Attack Alley. This one, though, is typically missing all the parts. But I'll tell you what's not typical about it, it's not broken. This playset always is broken. This one isn't. It's just a shell. But if you've got a damaged shell, this is invaluable for the right person. Sadly, we haven't got space in the van for a unbroken Karate Kid playset. If it was box complete, then we have got space. We'll find space, but like this, but it's just, it's just cool to see one that's not actually bust. So I finished looking around, I've got a few bits that I'm going to buy here, but we've just been given the exciting news that Peter and Michelle are actually going to go and take us to their top secret location, which is their toy stash. So uh, we'll hopefully get some more stuff there. They're going to do a morphing uh, scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. If you know I'm putting no effect on that, you <laughs> should do that. <laughs> This is, we call this the vault. Oh, cool. So this is where yeah, we yeah. sort. Oh, it's uh, a great space. Oh, it is. We put everything in that we buy. Um, and then from here, it goes to the shop. So this is where we repair, uh, sort, yeah. Take a look around. All boxes of, in the back are filled with toys. That's like a mini reproduction of the shop. Oh, yeah. We should get one of those. Yeah, it's just everywhere. It's all completely random. It I just, like it. Yeah, we still have to search through it. Oh, wow. <laughs> G.I. Joe vehicles. We've got the General. We've got him. This, this thing, I've got to be honest with you, it's one of the worst vehicles that they did in the line. It's massive, it breaks, it's not very good. And there's about three or four of them in here knocking about, but look, Look at the treasure we've got here. 
This is the Defiant. It is a very, very hard piece to get in the UK. You just don't see them. Just walk in here and all of a sudden there's a Defiant on the shelf. Now, I'm not a G.I. Joe guy, but you know what? If we buy that, it could be. It's hard to get here, right? It's hard yeah, even yeah, in yeah. America. This they, is... they have the, the vehicle that it should come with. Yeah. And inside that box, wow. there's another one. Oh, wow. But I need time to put it together to see if I can get a complete one. I... Have we got time today? <laughs> you, want, you want to play? Okay, so let's have a look. All right, so we've got the main base body here. I've never, ever had one personally because they have a reputation for being one, breaky, two, never complete, and three, expensive. And, you know, it's one of those things that I've not really picked up because we just didn't see them in the UK. Imagine getting that as a kid. I mean, the box it came in was huge. Go on, Peter, work out. <laughs> That's cool. Get the, the shuttle. Let's it's see if it effect. still works. So the shuttle should go in here. Right. Open this up. Oh man, can you imagine? Can you imagine having this as a kid? <laughs> imagine playing with that. I mean, Peter's <laughs> puffing and panting like Billy over here. <laughs> imagine moving that around as a kid. Imagine having that night. You're going right. We're gonna go and play with this. You'd be like, oh, I don't need to do a workout now. Oh, get some Joes here. That's oh, great. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get him there. Obviously, he's dressed in all his space gear. They're ready to go to space. These are all space. Where's his parrot? Uh, Parrots in space. <laughs> Forget monkeys in space, we're gonna put parrots in. So now this should go up. Yeah. I've never tried this. Oh. <laughs> should oh. we do it? I mean, if you're willing to risk it, I mean, I'm gonna say yes. Oh, but... look, it should be. There's a, there's a, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? I don't think we should risk it. Maybe. So essentially, let's just say, it goes up like that, like a rocket and takes off, but we're not gonna do it with this one because it's gonna break. I have to, we have to sort it out first. How long Clean have you, it? days and days of work just I think so, sorting yeah. out this, is yeah. it? I already started like sorting out all the DI Joes. I started with the figures. I was now doing all the, the the veer the the vehicles yeah and I would come later to the bigger parts yeah so this is all the loose parts we have online so when somebody orders we pick out the DI Joe 84 89 very and well we organized. pick the toys very well so. organized I'm going back in there for dig now we've got this out yeah let's dig further there's more let's there's more so much dig. cool stuff also behind here. This is cool stuff, yeah, like a yeah. pre-transformer. Uh, oh, here's a, this is also cool because um, this is the loose spaceship. Yes. Because probably the big set uh, wouldn't sell that 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 much many times. No. So sure. they just thought like, well, give it another color and uh, sell it as a loose. Yeah. Again, it's not something you see in the UK. Look at these card bags. Decent card backs as well. Very nice. More GI Joe stuff. These guys obviously really like GI Joe. So I'm trying to find something that isn't GI Joe. Just boxes and boxes of bits. This. Star Wars junkyard. There's another one in here. There's loads of it. That's a toy I've not seen before. What I think this is, oh, I know what this is. I do know what it is. This is cool. This is cool, is the car not there? I hope the car's here. I want to be careful opening this, it's got lots of bits. Yeah, there's the car. You had to put it together. Yeah. Right? So this, you got a normal Porsche, nine to eight. They put flared arches on it and went for it a bit. It was a bit Mad Max, because they went with all the accessories that go on top of it to make it into like a sort of fighting vehicle. 
So this would drop on the top like that, so it'd make it like a reinforced vehicle, different wheels for it, all sorts. So it would eventually look like one of these. Look, little wheels on the outside. Make the car look completely different. They are really, really cool. It's not complete, unfortunately. Oh yeah, but it's cool yeah, I though. think I'm missing one at Athena, like always. Oh, this is... Um... This is old stuff. This, oh, so Mark's. Uh, you, you, yeah, so um, Jane West, that is. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look in this box. You could stay all day here. <laughs> so here's hey, the, some cool stuff in here. This is Jane West. I love a little mixed box of things. It's very old. So we've got Oof. knockoff ponies. That's a little pony thing. That's G2, I think that. Another knockoff pony, a troll, load of Playmobil, random horse, the random horse. Oh, is it um, one of the clipper? Oh, are they from the My Little Pony? Sort of, uh, they're associated with fair, uh, what they're called, not fairy tales. Uh, oh. oh, we have a Dutch name, Stokstaartjes. Yeah, they'd like, they, yeah, they come on, um, you put them on a stand. Right? Yeah, yeah. And they come with uh, um, yeah, uh, stock starches, but what's the... How cool is that? What is that? Don't know. It's amazing. If you're a drummer, that's amazing. Just drag that out the bottom of the box. We've got a, a keeper. Keeper? Yeah. Okay. Keepers. She's not gone too yellow. She's not complete. But... Could she be for sale? Yeah. Okay, let's put her on a pile. Keeper. Oh yeah. We could spend literally all day in here searching through boxes. I just haven't got time to search through everything. That's what we do. Because we find treasure <laughs> as we go. That's what we do in here. It is. Yeah, I can imagine. But then we have to flip, flip flopper. This is yes, what you were talking, what I, what about, talking about. Yeah. So how does it work? Give us the demo. Let's go. There you go. And then this should, as it's stuck. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I remember them now, yes. I do. And so now we have 10, so you can move 10 pieces. It's yeah, just the magnets, they, they come in here. I love, it's a cassette. You, you gotta love your cassettes. He's like in a Camas knockoff. He is, isn't he? Yeah, he's really cool. It's a little sticky. Yeah. There's no brand on there. No. No. So it's an Akamas knockoff. It, it looks. I know. Yeah. It, like Akamas were not even the biggest company no, in the world, like and someone's knocking them off. What a weird thing to <laughs> Some of these knockoffs, they just look amazing. They do, yeah. They are cool. How much could the uh, the twins be? They've not got the guns, but. Mm, yeah, well. What do you say, Jeffrey? Oh, I'm not sure. Come on. You're, you're the, the, uh, the Transformer expert. Not sure about that. 10 Value. each, 20 euros, do it. Uh, Maybe I'm uh, wrong. I think they're worth a bit more than that. Yeah. They're more so worth I would, more I would, I would perhaps look them up and then let me know. You know, we could perhaps talk about them later. We've got some swag, we've got some things. We're taking them back to the shop and to uh, negotiate and sort a price. All right, let's go inside. We've spotted up here what looks to be a complete monstructor. Now I love these, but as Peter has agreed with me on, I'm also a little bit nervous. I'm actually holding one of the bits I'm most nervous about here. So I'm gonna very delicately show you him. And why am I so worried about this? And some of you will be screaming at the TV, I know. Gold plastic syndrome. If I drop this, it will shatter. If I breathe too hard near it, it will shatter. If I so much as move the wrong muscle, it will shatter. So it, though it's complete, you can't put it together because, yeah, you've guessed it, it will shatter. If you bring it home, it's gonna break. I've already got one very breaky toy <laughs> in the van and I'm already nervous about when I get it home and unlock, unwrap it to see if it's broken. Oh, I can wait so to know what it is. I think taking that home, would be a little bit too much stress on me. I mean, every speed bump, you'd be going, no, no, no. There are so many amazing loose figures just everywhere, and we just don't have time to go through it. It's really sad. 
But what I have found, just perched over there, sticking out of Castle Grayskull, Fido Dido. This guy was big in Europe, but we only got him in the UK as a uh, mascot for 7up. And everyone had him on the t-shirts. He was everywhere for about six months, as it is with these things. And there's a little bendy of him. We call him Fido Dido. Fido Dido. It's, uh, but it's Dutch. There you go, Fido Dido. Fido Dido, folks. I really forgot about this guy. I had to pick him up. Oh, adventure people. Oh, Gav. Oh, that's scary. Oh, Gav. Yeah? Well, look at this. What you found? A bit of you. Oh, I found some adventure people for me, but, you know. <gasps> He's cool. You got him. What's that, Gav? Oh, what? Is that a cassette tape? Yeah, I think so. Scary McDonald's sound effects. Oh, yeah, I've got to have that tonight. That'll be the second tape I bought this trip. I've already got five minutes before we need to leave Amsterdam. I know, we need to leave We're Amsterdam in five car. minutes. Yeah. Come on, guys, you need to go. I know. Come okay. on. Five yeah, minutes. I, I Here you go. One. It's really hot. We need a drink. We've got two minutes to get back to the van because we've got to, got to leave. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man. Safe travels. Guys. See you guys. And we also don't want to get run over by a bike. Yeah. <laughs> it's very dangerous here. It is. <laughs> Everywhere you walk, you sort of go, oh, it's a bike. Well, that was pretty cool. What a beautiful place. It's not like completely different. You think where we've traveled. The surroundings, yeah. yeah. But still, so many bikes. <laughs> so many bikes. Everywhere many... we go, bikes. How many times did you nearly get run over? I know. <laughs> you really did save me on that last one. <laughs> so we're going to go and see. Elmu while we're on the way to What sort of thing we're looking at there? Vintage, are we? We're looking at some vintage, but more modern stuff. There's gaming and oh, things okay. like that. A bit of everything. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. He's like a really nice guy when I spoke to him. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited by it. And I've never been to Belgium before either. So, we're here at the same Mule's place. So Elmu, I mean, she's always there. He's Van Lock. There you go. Nintendo, cool. Sega, Star Wars, Atari, PlayStation. Elmo. Yeah, I think this is going to be a gaming sort of paradise. If you're into that side of things, watch this bit. Samuel. Samuel. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Are you all right? Fine, fine. And you? Oh, Can we come in? Hi. It's been a long journey. It yeah. has. <laughs> Always a short. Ooh. When you write it out and you say it's only two and a half, three hours. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then when you actually do it, you realise, oh, it's oh, It's <laughs> lovely and cool in here. It's yeah, it's, it's better than outside. Oh, we've got some, uh, oh. some nice vintage masters in here. Bear in mind, this is a house. This is set up like a shop. It is. This is like... There's already exciting things. Ponies. Mad Dog McCree on CDI. What? <laughs> that is amazing. I don't even know. That's sort of a knockoff of a knockoff. That's amazing. I don't even know what that is. I've never seen that before. It's a knockoff He-Man. It's uh, from 86, I think. Wow. Uh, and it's called Centauros. Centauros, um, so like a horse. Yeah. But I, I forgot the line now. <gasps> Look, Look at that there. Banjo Kazooie N64 shop display. Oh my life! Look Sorry. This. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Look at this. Is this an original shop display? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is yeah. incredible. Look it's, at it's that. A, when you Mario. light it up, it's with black light and uh, it's. Uh, oh, it's wow. Really nice. Look at this Batmobile, Gav, Gav, Gav. Oh, right oh, on. Oh, that's amazing. Right on 89 Batmobile. Yeah, I don't know what it is about this part of the world and G.I. Joe Generals, but today, I've seen more today than I've ever seen in my entire life. Look up here. There's two of these things. As impressive as it is to see in the box, I still think it's an absolutely rubbish toy. I don't care what you say, but yeah. So we've seen six today. That's a record. That's gotta be some sort of record. Big tin Pac-Man bin. We've also got a Dr. Mario one hiding at the back, but that for me. Miss Pac-Man Atari 2600 Mobile. Oh, this is some lovely gaming stuff. Man. Look at the face on him. Oh my life. It's just basically a, a knockoff Joe line. They did lots and lots of things like this, so you could buy a whole host of characters, and they had all these different vehicles so it was a way of kind of you could play along with these with any of your three and three quarter inch figures. Samuel has got absolutely loads of them. 
sort of, I don't know what club he's been going to. It's not my, evidently these are based on some of the A-team figures. And when I say they're rubbish, that is not a compliment. The A-team figures were terrible of this size. Even the guns are the same look. Really cool. I can't believe this is a house. This is a house. Me just explain, this is a house. I'm not, it's, it's a house. If it's a proper collector's house, you'll have to be a, a, try and get a path to a chair, and then they've got a path to the toilet and path to the bedroom. It's a single man, but this is a, a man with two children and responsibilities and a wife. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> he's a, he has an organised shop within his house. Those are all knockoffs. The, yeah. the only ones that are official are the, the ones with the, what, the, uh, these, these two yeah, are of official. Those two. Yeah. They're amazing though, but it doesn't matter, the knockoffs are just as... Yeah, it's fun. Okay, I spotted this that's really cool in here, in this cabinet. You remember the Tomitronic 3D games, you'd hold them up to the light. And then we've got here, not Tomy, but by a company called Lance. But it would appear to be a very similar style of game, but shaped. Look at that, how cool. Tested and working, shaped like a stealth bomber. Oh, I bet that's amazing. We need to get some batteries in there, have a little play. Yeah, very cool. Here he is, the Omnibot, the Tomy robot that everyone wanted, but no one could afford. There you go, it was properly radio controlled. You could, you know, take your dad's lunch into him. I think on the advert, oh no, I'm thinking of Big Track where there was an apple in the back of the trailer, but you could whiz him round. Well, it wasn't very fast. <laughs> it was an amazing robot, but so, so expensive at the time. The little ones were more affordable. Amazing, Pac-Man and Centipede on 5200. Came after the 2600, it was a lot less popular, but you know, you don't see it very often. It's quite cool for me, that is. This is a nice item here. This is a job for Superman. It's a clock and Superman is attached to the big hand and he flies around and it's only 15 euros. Not only that, two for 25. It's like a, a real shop in someone's house. That's really cool. That's a really nice vintage item, 1988. Hot Wheels attack pack. Really cool toy line, really inventive toy line this was. Came out in the early 90s, and I think they're starting to come through. That's priced at 25 euros, and it is new. I think that's gonna have to go in a little pile. The attack pack, so basically you had a truck, quite a normal looking truck, as you see on the picture on the box. But then it formed an attack, and had teeth, and teeth in the tires and everything. So it was, you know, the attack pack was that it was just looking normal. So it's a kind of a transforming toy. I love them. I think they're really up and coming. I think for 25 euros, I think that's something I'm going to invest in. This is probably the worst turtle bootleg I've ever seen. And at the same time, maybe the best. Look at him. It's just a guy and they've literally stuck a slightly too small turtle head on him. <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> Amicable, Herculean. Wonder what that translates to. But yeah, 19 euros. Have you ever seen one of them before, people? I don't think so. Oh, MicroMaster Countdown. I'm not sure what price he's got on this. I'm assuming that's not right on top. Because if so, it's far too cheap. 50 euros. That's definitely going in my pile. What an absolute steal that is. Are you ready for this? Oh, boom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. We have a winner. Stuck on earth, Alf. <laughs> in his club singing outfit. That is incredible. It's three euros. It's happening. <laughs> How much is the weird horse thing? Uh, 25. 25? Yeah. <laughs> and it's a um, Guardian Patrol, I think, the toy uh, line. Yeah, I've seen it, but yeah. I've not seen this particular one yeah. with this head. So 25 euros? Yeah. yeah. 25 euros for a toy that's... 
dreadful. <laughs> really rubbish, but amazing. Yeah. 25 euros, Gav. That's awesome. I bought something rubbish that is yeah. really difficult to fit in the van. <laughs> but it is, I'm having him. Thank you very yeah, much, Samuel. No That's problem. amazing. I'm definitely having him. He's great. <laughs> Why do I like it? I don't know. <laughs> just, I think I've, I think I've got heat exhaustion. I'm just looking at stuff that I. That's rubbish. What is it? I don't know what it is. I like it. I'll just put him there for now. So I really want to ask about this. Look at that. Ducktails. Ooh. There we go. Let's go and ask about this. This is great. How much could that be? Uh, it's thirty. Thirty euros. Yeah. Okay, put that in my pile. That's cool. <laughs> oh, we've got another room look. Oh, cool. That's a really cool. Imagine having that as a kid. That's made by a topper or Deluxe Reading. And uh, basically, you could, it's, it, you could be like your dad in an American 1950s car. That's really cool. You've got your air, your heat, defrost your screen. And all this sort of stuff sort of worked in its own fashion. It's really cool. Oh, there's a Vectrex next to it. The most delicate gaming system ever. If that breathe near it and it will break, it's one of those. There's loads of cool stuff on here. <gasps> Look at this. Oh, I think I found the worst ET in the world. Oh my life. It's a bit dusty. Maybe. That's amazing. Oh, of course. He's French. <laughs> Look at his face. You knew he was French. Samuel. Yeah. Can I ask about this ET? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's a French. Uh, he is French. Yeah. Look at his face. He's very French. Yeah, he's awesome. He's amazing. <laughs> I love him. Yeah. Is he for sale? He's not. <laughs> I, I love him too. <laughs> oh. And like I said before, you've got impeccable taste. Gav, how much do we love him? That's, oh, he's incredible. That is 100% <laughs> exactly the kind of rubbish that we love. He is terrible. <laughs> but I adore him. I've never ever seen one like that. It is now my mission in France to find him. I need him. French people, if you're watching this and you've got one of these, please get me one. <laughs> Put it in the back of a 2CV and I will buy it. Rubbish robots. <laughs> Compu robots. Look at him. Now, this would probably have been one of the most complicated toys to play with ever. Look at all them buttons. I'm pretty sure the deal with this is you had to program exactly what he was going to do, where he was going to go. And I'd imagine you'd spend an hour punching it all in, punching it all in. And he'd go along, he'd turn around, he'd come back to you. And you spent an hour for that. But how cool is he? And he's got, is this, it looks like a camera. No, it's a light. It's a little light. Uh, but uh, rubbish. <laughs> and it's basically Vincent from Black Hole. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, even got the uh, the ball wheels. Wow. Nice try, Lance. Same make as that handheld round there. Okay, this is pretty cool. I do love a, uh, a rubber sucker set. <laughs> but these Flintstones dark gun set, it's a metal, it's actually a metal board. So they should stick to it pretty well. That's really nice. I think Joe will like these. Maybe like Arco. And we've got one, two, three, four of them. So we need to see if we can do a deal. How much are they? They are, they've got 15 euros each on them and we've got four. Samuel? 54 to four. Sounds good to me. Sounds good, good. let's okay. go for that. So, we've had an amazing time. We've now got a few things on the counter. We've been a few things that have sneaked in. We've got a clock. It doesn't work, but for five euros, for what Samuel said he'll do for us, that's absolutely bargain. We love that. We've also got the MicroMaster base. Now this, unfortunately, the toy itself is a pretty ruined example, but the box has its inner, so it's all there. And for 30 euros, I think it's worth it just for the box and a toy inside and go off to auction because it isn't the standard we'd have in the shop, but the box, the box is why we're buying it. So that's 30 euros. Samuel also said 25 euros for the weird horse thing, which I, huh, 
I'm overjoyed with. And we've got 50 euros for our quick start target set from the Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones, I can't stop singing it. And then we've got the DuckTales set for 30 euros. And with it, we've been thrown in a little black hole glass. We've also got the attack pack bargain at 25 euros. So normally at this point, we'd ask you what you could do for the lot. I can do 140. I'll do 150. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I think you've already done. Otherwise, it's double discount. And I hate it when people do that. And okay. I feel bad. So 150. I'm really happy. About. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you very much, Samuel. That's amazing. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That's awesome. Brilliant. 150 euros. Loads of cool stuff and a weird horse thing. Yeah, Winning. That was, that was not amazing. Like, not like anywhere else we've been either. No, that no. was really cool. This is like the unique place on the trip. And like, look at that, you automatically want to go back in. You know, you're like, you're looking, it's like the longboard just propped there, sells yeah. it immediately. And the Nintendo sign on the longboard, yeah. it's like you're there going, yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Right, let's load up the van. Oh. Where are we going to put all this stuff in? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. So much stuff. Hello and welcome to Toy of the Country. Toy or, of two countries. Yeah, two countries. Of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Make of that what you will. <laughs> but the Netherlands and Belgium rocked, didn't they? Right, they did. So had a great oh, time. Yes. That final that, I say shop. It wasn't really even a shop. House. It was house. a shop in a house. Yeah, how surprising was, so was cool. that? So cool. Walking in. So what's your toy of the day, Gal? Or toy of the country. Toy and which country. country did it come from? It was from Space Oddity in Amsterdam. Wow. And what happens is, sometimes you'll completely wrap filming, Matt's put the camera away, all that, and you'll spot something out the corner of your eye. This is exactly what happened here. The box is very faded, but anyone who's been watching for a while knows my love of Tommy Robots. So, here she is. A little bit faded, but we opened her up. All her inners. And look how beautiful she is. She's a later release than the original 80s ones, but she's got exactly the same aesthetic. And just look, how cute is that? Yeah, she's awesome. Even I like her, I think she's great. It's a great choice. I can't wait to get some batteries in her. But there was some great stuff and we picked up some amazing stuff there. And Toy of the Day was really tough for me because I picked up lots of good stuff. Mm. Nothing where I was kind of going, wow. Yeah. But I'm going to pick something from Belgium. Okay. Because when we went to see Elmu, I spotted this box. And yes, it is only a box really. There is a toy inside. It is reasonably complete, but it's very, very yellowed. But look, it's got all the inners and I've got the perfect toy to go in this. I have a minty one waiting to go in this. So for me, this is ideal because it shoots the price for mine. It shows the importance of just picking up a part, picking up a box, because you never know you're gonna need it. So finding this, and then he charged me like 30 euros for it. I think I can get that back for the yellow toy. Yeah. And then I've got a free box. Fantastic, so from a purely value point of view, this is it. That's good. Right, shall we go and get something to eat? Oh, he's just honestly. <laughs> See you next time, folks. I think we've hit like the geek hotspot of Paris. Look at this, it's spectacular. It's always been here that I've wanted to come to. Weird and cool. This is a shop with grails absolutely everywhere. It's fantastic. In this comic shop, I found this cabinet. He's very cool. Toy Shop on Tour 2. Drive. I'm bored already, I'm sick of driving now. How are we going to entertain ourselves? Flintstones, meet the Flintstones! Transformers, robots in disguise. Autobots face their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. <laughs> 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 <laughs>